Hey, footy fans, you're ready for some footy fun with Footy Finn and into the Rugby Championship and the Bledisloe Cup Game 1, uh, which all happens tomorrow in Sydney. Now, of course, uh, yours truly has been following uh, Australia versus New Zealand matches in both rugby codes for over 40 years. I know I don't look that old. I must have been a baby when I started, I hear you say. Uh, but anyway, it's it's often a bit of a, it's a special rivalry. It's a, um, we're neighbours, obviously. Um, the Wallabies and the All Blacks first played each other in 1903. The Bledisloe Cup, as we know, it came into being in 1932. Um, I've got fond memories of the clashes throughout the 1990s. Uh, they were nice and close, uh, particularly 1998, where Australia won 3-0. Can you believe it? Uh, but things are different now. Of course, New Zealand has held the Bledisloe Cup since 2003. So, you know, a child born um, in that year would turn 21 this year. Um, so that puts things in perspective. Uh, more recently, New Zealand have won the last nine. Of course, Australia came desperately close to winning game one in 2022 under Dave Rennie in Melbourne, but they were basically robbed by a French referee. We won't go into that. Um, so Australia's last win was in 2020 in what was actually game four of that particular year. Um, in 2019 and 2015, both World Cup years, there have been two matches uh, played and they've finished one all draws, uh, but New Zealand retained the Cup. But going back, starting in 2012, the ledger is very desperate. It's 26 wins for New Zealand, four for Australia and one draw by my count. So extremely one-sided and it's been very demoralising, I have to say. Um, now, in the past two years and in some previous years, there's been one big win to New Zealand and then one close match. Um, and similarly, um, uh, you know, that could be the case this year. Once in a while, I find that whether it's complacency or whatever it creeps in or Australia just come out of the blocks firing, um, there's a little bit of an ambush or a surprise and the Wallabies uh, beat the All Blacks, and that's all we can hope for. Uh, but what's going to happen this year? Look, I don't think that's going to happen uh, necessarily. Um, things are obviously pretty desperate in Australian rugby. Personally, I think if we came away from these two matches with at least two losing bonus points, uh, that's probably the best we can hope for other than a minor miracle. In terms of current world rankings... Uh, the, New Zealand are ranked number three in the world, and deservedly so. Australia ranked number nine behind the likes of Italy and Scotland, and deservedly so. But in terms of this year's rugby championship, after four matches, each team, surprisingly uh, for New Zealand, just have one win each. Um, now, I'll go into that, but I, I personally think the New Zealand media and public have been a little bit harsh on the All Blacks this year. Sure, they did give away a lead against Argentina and lost to them 38-30 in Wellington. But apart from that, going back to last year's Rugby World Cup final and then the two most recent matches, three narrow losses against South Africa, the back-to-back -back world champions, particularly the last two being in South Africa, um, is actually a pretty solid effort. I think both, uh, you know, all of those have been by seven points or less. Uh, the Rugby World Cup final was only a one-point margin. So, look, uh, I don't. I think, uh, personally, the New Zealand media and public are a bit harsh on the All Blacks. They are firmly placed in the top three in world rankings, and deservedly so. Anyway, so, that's a preamble. Getting on to this match. Uh, it's an afternoon game in Sydney, 3.45pm local time. Incidentally, I reckon that's because the NRL and the AFL have got elimination semi-finals that night, and Rugby Australia knows they've got no chance of competing against those two codes in terms of TV rankings, so they're trying to do the best they can. Uh, but we all love a bit of afternoon rugby, test rugby anyway. Now, looking at the, the teams, 
And the Wallabies team, um, after a very disappointing thrashing in Argentina two weeks ago, it's actually a fairly solid team. Okay, apart from overseas-based players who aren't being picked, um, apart from Corey and Betty at the moment, uh, I would say uh, the Wallabies' uh, props are looking pretty solid. The loose forwards, back row, likewise, the centres, and two, mostly, the back three as well. Um, in terms of the props, look, I'll go into this, but um, Bale and Tupo are starting... Um, sadly, or, or Tupo doesn't seem to be as fully match fit as he could be. Both were substituted after about 30 minutes in the last test against Argentina. Given the makeup of the All Blacks props, I'd almost think about switching our bench and our starting props around. Um, that's not going to happen. Uh, but I'd think about starting Slipper and Ellen Alatoa um, and giving them a run for 30 or 40 minutes and then bringing on Bell and Tupo. Um, uh, those bench props have got 213 tests between it, them, and provided Slipper gets on the field, he will set a record for the most Wallabies caps, 140. He'll overtake George Gregan, who is level with at the moment. Uh, Wallabies halves, um, they've recalled Nick White at scrum half and Noah Lolisio at fly half, of course, they used to play together at the Brumbies until White joined uh, the Western Force this year. Um, and on the bench, they're going with the Reds halves pairing of Tate McDermott and Tom Liner. Uh, this is a bit of a strategy uh, that Schmidt's had uh, for a few tests now, excluding the previous one. Um, so a totally new, the halves combo that started the last test against Argentina, Gordon and uh, Donaldson are gone. They're not even in the 23. Also at lock, Lucan Salakia Loto is on the bench, which is a bit of a surprise, but he'll provide um, some, some real impact off the bench. Okay, over to the All Blacks. Um, now, a few changes from their last test in South Africa. Their, new, their back three is basically revamped, so Bowden Barrett comes back in starting at fullback. Will Jordan goes back to the wing, and then Caleb Clark comes in on the wing. They've got Sever Reese on the bench as well. Uh, they're still going with Ratama and Dmac in the halves pairing, and Wallace Satiti at number six, who's playing, I think, in only his third test or thereabouts, did very well against South Africa. Uh, the bench props have got a, a weigh a total of about 300 kilograms uh, between the two of them. Uh, Tosi made his, um, his, his test debut against Fiji recently. He's, he's on the bench there. He'll provide a lot of impact. And that's part of the reason why I suggested the switch for the Wallabies, but that's not going to happen. Overall, looking at the bench, the New Zealand... Uh, reserve forwards are relatively inexperienced as a group, whereas their backs um, have have that test experience. Now, both teams have had very low scoring second halves and, in fact, have scored, um, with a couple of exceptions, very few points, if any, in the last 20 minutes of recent games. And that includes uh, the All Blacks have been scoreless, I believe, in the last 20 of both recent tests against South Africa. Um, so that's going to be interesting. Scott Robinson, All Blacks coach, didn't use some of his bench forwards in the last test, which he got um, a bit of criticism for. Anyway, look, what's it going to be? Is it going to be a thrashing by the All Blacks? Is it going to be a surprise win by the Wallabies or a close, a close encounter? that would probably get edged out by New Zealand. I think across this two-match series, there's going to be one big win to the All Blacks and one narrower win to the All Blacks. I can't see um, the All Blacks losing this one, and I think they're going to win, sadly, uh, by at least 14, 15 points, hopefully less than 20. Anyway, that's my prediction. Bring it on. Can't wait. Let's hope the Wallabies at least can be competitive in Bledisloe 1 of 2024. Till next time, catch you in the middle of a rolling mall. See ya.